Fox Sports. We are Blackhawks. We are St. Louis. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. And Cardinals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. A beautiful night to wrap up the homestand and wrap up the three game series against the Reds. The rubber game Cincinnati and St. Louis in game three on Fox Sports Midwest. That's the Cardinals Hall of Famer Jim Edmonds. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Jim Hayes is here as well. It's been frustrating for the Cardinals in this series Jimmy to find a way to get Billy Hamilton out when he's on base. He causes all kinds of havoc. Yeah he's one of the best leadoff men in the game an old school leadoff guy with a lot of speed and can run 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 and he gets on base he's going to try to steal second and you see right here he's going to try and steal third and they've had a hard time keeping him off base nine games this year against the Cardinals 11 for 26 and what stands out even with Molina behind the plate 11 stolen bases six runs scored for Billy Hamilton so he's going to try to get him out that's Jaime Garcia the lefty gets the call for the St. Louis Cardinals. Reds Cardinals coming up.
Jaime Garcia. Lefty Jaime Garcia, sensational last time out. He's trying to improve to nine and eight. Arquia in the driver's seat. Garcia at home can be dominant. And against the Central Division, he has pitched quite well. Last time against Atlanta, eight innings could have gone out for the ninth. The Cardinals elected to go with Sumuano. Oh. Most importantly, they picked up a win. Jaime Garcia gets the call tonight. The rubber game, the Cincinnati Reds. The St. Louis Cardinals. Game three comes your way next. is brought to you by Bud Light Live by Chevrolet. Visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealer for great prices on the all-new 2016 Malibu. 
and by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. He's in the show and now he's signing autographs for the folks before game number three here tonight. Electric performance for his debut, Alex Reyes. Also enjoyed his visit with Jim Hayes on the pregame show. Very nice young man. We're at Bush Stadium here in St. Louis, along with the Cardinals Hall of Famer Jim Edmonds and Jim Hayes. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Muggy, 91 degrees as we wrap up this homestand, the early start, so it is a tough sun field without question for the right fielder on both sides. There's a look at the switch hitting Billy Hamilton. We talked about it in the open. You have to find a way to keep him off base. He's terrorized the Cardinals this year. Then Zach Cozart, Joey Votto, Adam Duvall, A. Eugenio Suarez, Tony Renda, Tyler Holt, Tucker Barnhart, and Anthony DiSlefane. Hamilton has been running wild here recently against Pittsburgh and the first couple of games against St. Louis. Jaime Garcia gets the call tonight. His record stands at eight and eight. Jaime loves pitching at Bush Stadium. Pretty good numbers inside this division as well. The first pitch to Hamilton is taken for a strike and we're underway. It's Angel Hernandez calling the balls in strikes. Billy Hamilton talked to Joey Votto about a month ago. Jimmy, you played with Votto. You know he's got a routine, and that's Peralta at third base. And one of the things that Joey does in that routine is, in many ways, he likes to be left alone. But he actually called in Billy Hamilton and said, here, here's what I'm trying to get to you. Let's think through the at-bats. What are pitchers trying to do to you? What are you thinking in these situations? And since that time, it has had a positive effect on Billy Hamilton. You know, it's funny you say that because uh, the other day we were talking about hitting, and I remember just more mental than anything made a difference in my daily routine. And Mark McGuire was so instrumental in just trying to be mentally prepared as much as your physical daily routine and the swing. And if you're thinking good thoughts and you feel good about what you're thinking about, your body kind of just goes on its own and takes over. And that's something that they're talking about right there and it's something that's really important. There's Holiday. Catch is made for out number two. Late scratch in the lineup. Matt Adams at first so here's some of the changes different looking defensive uh, alignment for the Cardinals especially on the infield. There's Matt Carpenter at first base. Adams a late scratch and then Johnny Peralta who was not in the starting lineup is at third base. Greg Garcia at short, Wong at second, so those two are your corner men. Here's Joey Votto hitting 290, and he looks at a strike. What impressed you the most about Votto when you played with him? I think he's just, like you said, the routine and game plan, and doesn't really veer off his path too often. And a, he's a really good at being just consistent effort day in and day out. It's like he's not up there one day trying to hit a homer and next day trying to go the other way. It's just gets a good pitch when he when he you know when he's ahead in the count. He's trying to let it fly stays through the ball tries to hit the ball the other way. Doesn't swing at a lot of bad pitches. They say he never deviates from his game plan. He's got a great understanding of the strike zone. He'll look at video looks at past matchups in this case against Jaime Garcia has his game plan and even if he goes over four and sticks with the game plan he's OK with it when he goes outside of that and makes outs that's when he gets frustrated easier said than done oh but yeah kind of how we all are it just you know it's your game plan is determined by the stuff that the guy has on the mound that day and against a guy like Jaime Garcia he's going to have to battle a little bit more. Maybe take a shot when he's guessing fastball versus a guy that's going to pump you fastballs and you can go ahead and try to cut it loose a couple times during the, the at bat. Hit up the middle and again in this series the Cardinals cannot set down the Reds one two three in the first. So Votto after a very slow start to this year is red hot. The single right back up the box. 
pretty good swing here. One thing you got to realize is with Garcia's stuff, guys are a little bit more tentative, and that actually will allow them to hit the breaking ball more often. The fastball, you can't really let it fly because it's going to sink in a cut, but it'll keep you back enough to be able to see the breaking ball a little bit more. So see how that kind of plays out during the course of the game. Yeah. The younger players tend to chase after that fastball, and it's you'll see a little chase here and swings at balls that will be outside the zone, and the older players will not chase the fastball, but yet hammer the breaking ball when it's over the plate and hittable. Here's a 1-0 pitch to Adam Duvall. Rounded to third, it's fair. Peralta to second and the fourth. Red Strand a runner. Jaime Garcia a scoreless first after a terrific outing on Friday night. We'll see if that carries over to this evening. His warm up tosses. And this year he is 6 0 with a 2.94 ERA. Matt Carpenter leads it off for the Cardinals, followed by Colton Wong and Brandon Moss. So three lefties at the top of the lineup. Then Holiday, Molina, and Peralta. Hazel Baker, the started center. Craig Garcia, then Jaime Garcia. Someone needs to alert Angel Hernandez are ready to play. There you go. Thanks, Angel. We did have good video of it, though. At least the man was we right did. there walking Carpenter up to the plate. Angel got in the way. It's Phil Nichols, the man on the scene. Carpenter is hitting 293. And the first pitch is taken for a strike. 14 home runs. He's driven in 55. You have dealt with an oblique issue. Carpenter's dealing with that. And they've talked about the speed of the game and trying to get up to major league ready. Major league speed. There's a high drive into deep right. Holt is back. One nothing. St. Louis into the Cardinals bullpen. Home run number 15. Matt Carpenter. Nice way to start. It's a nice way to catch up with the speed of the game. You can see the first couple games back in a little, little flinch here, a little rough slide last night, but uh, it takes you a couple days to get back into sync. But, you know, just coming back from injury, you're always a little wary of if I do too much, am I going to get hurt again? And looks like this swing right here looks pretty good. Just the eighth home run allowed by this right hander. Making his 12th start here tonight. And it's one and two on Colton Wong. 
I'm sure this is a tough spot for guys like Colton Wong. Matt Adams can't get in the lineup. For Adams, once he's penciled in, he's injured. And for Wong, it's about trying to get your timing. Yeah, definitely just getting your timing, being out there every day. One of the things that the game has changed, talk about a lot of the rule changes and a lot of the player changes as far as a lot less playing time for a lot more players, where that means there's a lot of guys getting more playing time. In the old days, you'd run nine out there every day for 10, 12, 15 straight days, and then one guy, two guys might get a day off, and then you run them back out there again for the next 20, 30 days. So tough to get in a groove when you don't get a chance to play every day, but you can help that by your your own self by going out there and playing well. And then if you don't, tough to get back in the lineup. And Mike Matheny has been basically playing the hot hand. He's got a lot of options. There isn't that everyday set lineup except for a couple of players. There isn't really an everyday set lineup in terms of where guys hit in the lineup. But he's just rolling with the hot hand at that time or a matchup. Well, the good news is that he's got a lot of guys on the team that can play both positions or a few positions and can move up and down in the order. And uh, when you have that, you have something to play with. If you don't have that, you, you're, you're really having to make stuff up as you go. Two and two the count. One out and nobody on. On the inside corner and a strikeout of Moss. The pitch arsenal for De Slafani. Fastball, slider, curve, and changeup. Following the home run, back to back K's, and it brings in Holiday, who homered here last night. The average has been down for Matt Holiday, but still here he is. He will get to 20 home runs, maybe 25 or 30. So still the pop is there, it's just a matter of the average coming up. And a hot streak could change that here in the final month and a half. Hot streak can definitely change that in a hurry too. These guys can roll off a good week and run into 10, 15 hits in a week and Changes your average dramatically. All of a sudden, you're you're hitting 260, 265 with over 20 home runs. 2-0 pitch, up the middle, base hit for Matt Holiday. Around the horn is presented by Dobbs. Two ball in left. Hamilton in center. Holt is in right. Suarez, Cozart, Renda, and Votto along the infield. Tucker Barnhart is behind the plate for Brian Price's club. So a two out hit by Holiday brings in Yachty. Home run last night for Molina, his fourth of the year. It's amazing how much this guy plays this stage in his career. Night after night, he is in this lineup. Especially in this this time of the year in this city. He's out there grinding it out in the heat. Talk about got another night game tomorrow and then a couple day games coming up and a day off. So you got to figure out do you give him a day in between against a hot Chicago team or let him keep rolling like this. Fourth home run is 34th RBI. He has reached base in 22 straight games. It's the longest streak by a Cardinals catcher since Gene Tennis reached it 35 straight. That was over two seasons. Ted Simmons, Joe Torre share the team's all time mark of 36 games for catchers in franchise history. And the 2 1 pitch to Yadier Molina on its way. Really good matchups coming up against the Cubs. Tomorrow night on the air at 6 30, 7 05 first pitch. Carlos Martinez and John Lester, Wayne Wright and Arietta Friday afternoon. Luke Weaver, Major League debut Saturday against Kyle Hendricks. Mike Leak and John Lackey on Sunday night. The Cubs are red hot. Chicago, 9 and 1 in their last 10. They've won eight in a row. And the Cardinals stand now 12 games back in the Central. 
That makes it awful hard to catch. You run off a 10 game streak like that. I mean it's uh, they're not slowing down. Marlins lose today to San Francisco. The Dodgers lost as well. A swing and a miss and a strikeout of Yadier Molina. Though he strikes out the side but gives up a couple of hits including a leadoff homer from that man Matt Carpenter. 15th of the year. After one inning of play from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Cardinals on top one nothing. The stage a carpenter home run has made it one nothing Cardinals. Let's send it down to Jim. Dan Alex Reyes looked about as confident as you could possibly look as he made his major league debut last night. But he told me there were some nerves. He said I was nervous warming up. Once I got into the game, I was fine. I focused on Yachty and pitched. He added, once you throw that first strike, that's when you take a breath. After a perfect ninth last night, Reyes told me his cell phone nearly exploded with people congratulating him. He said, everyone I knew since Little League, family members I never met, a lot of people were texting me. And then we had uh, Alex on the pregame show today, and that is one poised young man. What about his teammates? What did they say about his uh, debut? You know, because of the way the game went, uh, I don't think the excitement level was where it would have been, but everyone was kind of watching him and was very impressed by what they saw. We talked to a bunch of the Cardinals and they all felt like Dan they were seeing the first day of uh, what should be a very long major league career. After last night Mike Matheny addressed the uh, the media. What did he say last night and what did he repeat about uh, Reyes today. You know he said that he always felt that Reyes had a mature presence on the mound and he said he saw it last night as Reyes was making his way to the mound. He said, it looked like he was thinking to himself, they think they know what I have. Wait till they see this. And he said, some young players get overwhelmed when there's a lot of excitement around their debut or a lot of hype. And he said, he thinks Reyes is a guy who just will excel. And a final question, Jimmy, in terms of bullpen or starting right now for our fans, he is going to stay in the bullpen, and that's where probably this season he winds up. Yeah I mean they're going with Weaver on Saturday and he'll be in the bullpen and will back up Weaver on Saturday and I think that's the way the Cardinals will go until if another need uh, arises they'll address it then but for now he's in the bullpen and he says for him that's not that big of an adjustment he's just got to rebound a little quicker Dan. All right Jimmy thank you. Here is Tyler Holt. Who's hitting 221. No home runs. He is driven in eight. I'm telling you, Jimmy did his homework. Oh, he did. Always does. Wow. Ground ball to short. Garcia backhands. 
five pitches three round ball outs one nothing St. Louis. One to nothing, St. Louis, as we move to the bottom of the second. Take a look at Jim Edmonds' keys to the game presented by Toyota. Well, y'all, we all know it's this August and the dog days, as they say in, in the game of baseball, and really just got to keep pushing. We saw the schedule. We saw the schedule open up over the last couple weeks, and some people have said that they should have scored some more runs, done some more work against these weaker teams. And Chicago's coming into town, or actually, we're going to Chicago, and you just got to keep pushing. And the thing about chasing Chicago is you really just got to worry about the wild card and winning games right now. And uh, like I said, the dog days of summer are here and it's getting hot. You really just got to go out there each and every day and try to give the best that you can that day and replenish and come back the next day. Oh, and to the count, Johnny Peralta. You can understand, though, why the frustration is there from the fan base, certainly from the players, too. Dropped two of three last week against Cincinnati, two of three at home to Atlanta, and split the first two in this series. Peralta is out by a step. I think a lot is made of that from people looking ahead at the schedule, the media and the fans. Players don't look at that schedule like that. Players just look at we lost two out of three. Doesn't, I mean, it, it is important, obviously. You don't want to lose the, the bottom of the league, but happens and like I said people look forward to those that week of maybe you could run off eight eight out of ten but it doesn't happen that way and you really as a player you just go back to trying to win the series and that's tonight you got to try to get this series and start all over again do you look at standings when you were playing you, you do when you get a little bit closer I don't know about right now I mean obviously you can see what the Cubs are and there's really nothing you can do about it so I start paying attention to the wild card and a little maybe another week or two you really start having to pay attention and try to Pick it up a notch if you're chasing someone and staying ahead of someone if you got a couple game lead. Yeah, so you start paying attention with about six weeks to go for sure. Also depends on what kind of team you are. You know, I've been a lot of good teams through here and, and every, each one of them has done it a different way. And so I've had teams that I played on and just kept playing and winning and other teams have a lot of talk in the dugout about so and so won or lost today and we got to do whatever we can to, you know, pick up a game here. Asa Baker fly to center and now it's Greg Garcia. Home run by Matt Carpenter the difference so far. One nothing Cardinals and the 0 1. Lined out to short and the catch is made by Cozart. Cardinals go in order six pitches that inning. For the Cincinnati right hander Cardinals on top by a run.
celebrate the 50th anniversary of the historic Beatles concert at Bush Stadium 2. Tuesday, August 23rd, Beatles tribute night here at the ballpark. And purchase a special theme ticket. Get that T-shirt you just saw there, an exclusive Beatles at Bush Stadium T-shirt. And tickets are on sale now at cardinals.com slash theme. Paul McCartney will be here on uh, Saturday. Tucker Barnhart leads it off, followed by DeSlafani, and then Hamilton. Ground ball, broken bat, hit to short, out number one. Six ground ball outs right now for Jaime Garcia. As you get a look at the Hyundai pitch arsenal, a lot of fastballs, change up cutter. I think what you see is the fastball looks like a cutter sometimes, sinks sometimes. The change in cutter are an afterthought for some of these hitters because you can't look for anything else but that nasty sinker and you don't know which way it's going to go. Di Slafani hitting 143. He is from the hometown in New Jersey of Bruce Springsteen, and he says he's the only guy that hasn't run into him. He said everybody runs into Bruce Steen, uh, Springsteen at his hometown. Anthony now, though, living in Florida, and that might have something to do with it. <laughs> he's looking at the wrong Starbucks. <laughs> right. Wait a minute, where is he? Line to right and a base hit. Throw to first, not in time. That would be awfully embarrassing. It's happened before. It's happened a number of times. That would be a tough one to swallow. Oh. Hard enough to get a base hit. So the single to right and it brings in Billy Hamilton. Remember when Hamilton was coming through the minor leagues and he looked at the numbers of what he had put together in terms of stolen bases. It was ridiculous. Triple digits every year. Lead the league. Then he was called up and was such a threat in the stretch run for Cincinnati and the entire place would get excited knowing that if you got on late he was pinch running. And usually he came through. 2013 his first year is 13 stolen base which isn't a lot one caught stealing pretty quick impact oh yeah Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard against St. Louis best stolen base percentage Billy Hamilton 91.7 minimum 20 attempts 22 of 24 in his career can understand why this guy is so valuable to the Reds and yet some don't think so little hesitation tough to turn to no chance even with a hard hit ball even with the third baseman playing in it's not even close one little bobble and he's by the bag so easily I mean imagine if this guy figures out how to hit and get on base draw a walk a little bit more he's a weapon I'll tell you what I do like about him is he puts the ball in play those are some of the, that's one of the things that when you get a, a young speedy guy in the minor leagues they try and teach you to cut down your swing and do this do that he's doing that so wherever he's learned that along the way I'm glad he's not taking you don't see a lot of big swings not trying to do too much and that's where you're most valuable because see right there he can just get on base and now he can wreak havoc. Well we saw this the other night. In which a team takes a look at that neighborhood play, and if you're not on the base with the uh, ball, teams will challenge. And that was Colton Wong making the turn at second base. You would think that he'd be off the base if you're going to take a look at it, and it's close with that uh -huh. left foot that's up. That's not a neighborhood play right there. That is I what you would call that, but uh, it looked to me like he was still on the bag. Fan pulled me aside today and said they cannot stand this. This, this particular part. play that's being reviewed, the neighborhood play, stoppage in play, now we go to review and everything comes to a screeching halt. I get it. You want the plays right, but 
from a fan's perspective you could see why this would be a little frustrating. Looking at the replay on the the big screen you can see that. Johnny Peralta's bobble. But I don't think you can tell enough to, to overthrow that right there but. Peralta bobbling the ball got Colton a little off balance and. Grace just a little bit of delay in the ball getting to him and feet are starting to move away from the bag. I mean, I think if they blow this up and get really close, it might have a case, but from what I saw, that's going to be tough. Well, it's a big play for Brian Price. You put Billy Hamilton in scoring position. This isn't like some lumbering player that you're going to throw out there in scoring position. It's the fastest player right now in baseball. So fielder's choice five four on the play to brings in Cozart. Ball stands with two outs and a runner at first. Cozart fly to left his first time up. Did a good look here at both guys pitcher now Billy Hamilton at first to see what he does with a left handed guy throwing. Gets a little jumpy at times you can see he gives a false step like he's going to run once in a while and like I said it creates so much pressure on the pitcher to get rid of the ball in a timely manner trying to throw a strike keeping him from just running wild here's a 1 0 pitch Hamilton not running again two bowls no strikes. Yeah, what's your gonna, read with a lefty? I was going to say the last couple times he's stolen second base with a righty on. It wasn't even close because he kind of gets out there enough and gives a little walk and foot's not down. He just keeps on running and is, with his speed, it's it's easy. But uh, here with a lefty, you got to pay a little bit more attention. Good move or not a good move, you still got to make sure he picks up that foot and starts to go towards home. Good pitch, two and one. Remember, this was uh, an issue for Garcia. Backfield at spring training trying to work on his delivery to the plate with a runner at first. And at times you'll see those pitches get up, and that's another element of Billy Hamilton speeding up the pitcher. Well, Billy's so fast too that if he takes off on first movement, the play's not perfect. He's going to beat the throw from first base to second base. How are you? You lost weight. Three and one. You look good. How do you feel? Yeah, look good. You look smarter too. Three one pitch. Not running. Lifted to left. And Holiday makes the catch. Not the prettiest of catches, but you know what? He made the catch. Midway through three. Redbirds on top, thanks to a Carpenter home run.
it's one to nothing St. Louis thanks to a home run from Matt Carpenter as Jaime Garcia is visiting with home plate umpire Angel Hernandez. We should remind folks that uh, Jimmy along with Randy Flores World Series MVP David Eckstein will be part of our speaker series coming up on August 22nd. That's an off day for the club. Monday night as we relive some of the memories of 2006 looking forward to that Garcia lines it into center Hamilton makes the catch almost got over him I may put a charge in that one Billy Hamilton didn't think he hit it that good almost got over his head Ooh, barely pretty athletic move right there. I think David Eckstein is going to be high on the frequent flyer mileage as many times he's been back and forth to St. Louis this last couple weeks. He's got a bobblehead coming up too. Later in the season I think he's going to be here for that but August 22nd our evening with the Cardinals celebration of the 06 team Edmonds Eckstein and Flores. The Cardinals dot com slash events we've had great success with these with Whitey and Tony La Russa, Whitey at the ballpark tonight. Bob Gibson, Lou Brock, Red Shandings. Head to cardinals.com slash events to read all about it. The dinner and the drinks on the field and chance to have a World Series trophy picture. As well as autographed baseballs for everybody in attendance. Truly unique nights coming up here at the ballpark and again August 22nd. One ball one strike on Carpenter who is homered. And he hits it the other way. Well hit. Off the wall. Carpenter digging for second. He's thinking three. On his way to third. He is saved. In there with the triple. I'm going to call it right now. I'm going to go with the cycle tonight. Are you? Yes. I'm going, He's got out, the on two a, hard I'm ones. going out on a limb. <laughs> he is Hobart and now a triple. He hit that ball a ton. I was telling you right away. I thought that was going to be a homer. It's a big part of the ballpark for a left handed hitter. A little quicker slide tonight than last night. Mm -hmm. Chance here for Colton Wong to add to the Cardinals lead. He struck out his first time up. This right here is a situation for Colton to get better at. First at bat, took a fastball, swung hard at two kind of cutter sliders in the dirt. Good, good job by the pitcher. Come back up the next time, a little timid maybe. If I'm hitting right now I'm trying to get that runner in from home from third base as soon as possible I'm looking for a fastball I can hit up the middle nice and easy don't try to do too much. And it's one of the things that when I was a younger player maybe stay in your at bat mode Well, you're at bat mode right now is get the guy home as easy as possible and try to get that first fastball. Infield is drawn in one ball one strike. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Missouri Lottery Fox tracks. Really big breaking ball right there. I mean, I see Colton. Good hard swing. Got to get this run home. Infield in. The 1 2 pitch to Wong. Struck him out. Second time he is struck out. That's four on the night for Di Slafani. Same, similar 
pitches the first time. Seems like they want to just try to get him get ahead of Colton and then fire in breaking balls down and in, trying to get him to swing over the top. And that's good pitching. Pitching at its best, actually, right there. You speed a guy up and then you get him to swing at stuff that breaking out of the zone. Shift is on, and now Brandon Moss, two outs. Strike one. He struck out looking first time up. Take a look at our power stats presented by Kubota. Slugging percentage leaders and the Cardinals at 442. Matt Carpenter, big reason, along with this man right here, Brandon Moss. His last home run was against the Reds in Cincinnati. Check swing and he did go. Nothing into the count. Talk about it all the time. The little things that add up in a game and the Cardinals get a runner at third with your number two and three hitters coming up. Only one out. It's a run that's got to score. Now Suarez third baseman well off the line with two strikes more towards the shortstop position the 0 2 tapped foul mm -hmm. you know, the approach that you have to take as a hitter Jimmy with one out runner at third is different when you're up there kind of freewheeling with nobody on and the game plan the mindset is different. Well I like what Brandon Moss did right there he went right after that fastball. First pitch was a fastball he went after it didn't hit it. Tried to check his swing. On that nasty breaking ball, but watching from up here, it looks really easy. Keeps doing the same thing, trying to get ahead and then trying to bury that fastball down by your feet. That's what challenging you inside does. It, it makes the hitter commit early, thinking you're going to get a fastball inside, and usually creates that swing on that breaking ball, swinging over the top. So you have to commit. Pitcher stays away from you and then flips that breaking ball. You don't even you don't even offer at it. Because you don't have anything to rush for. Here's a one two. Evens it up at two and two. Moss pops it foul. I like how Brandon Moss approaches the art of hitting. When asked about it, he'll tell you, I'm up there and I'm paid to hit home runs. That, you know, it's how the game has changed to where you will sacrifice the strikeouts, the walks to an extent, for power in home runs, and he's got that. Every team is looking for it too. A 2 2 pitch. Boss hits it the other way. Long way to go. This ball is going to drop and it drops foul. You can see the catcher, Barnhart, right there. He wants that fastball, but he definitely wants it in on the edge. He would rather walk him right now than to miss with a fastball out of the plate and have him hit it off the scoreboard. I mean, it's, pitching is just right here. You see, he's trying to get it in there. Ooh, he missed a little bit. But you can see their game plan definitely is to just get that fastball in, maybe throw a fastball away, but and then bury that slider down by your feet. But everything comes off that fastball. And if you think a guy's gonna challenge in you, is going to challenge you, you're gonna swing a little bit more. You're gonna be a little bit more free swinging. And that's where that breaking ball down is so hard to lay off of. Two and two the count. Try to go back in there again. The next two Moss. So from 0 and 2 to a full count. So take me in the uh, the mind of Brandon Moss with Holiday on deck. How do you think they would approach him here? Again think, in. Well, I'm as a hitter, I'm thinking, be ready for the fastball, but do not swing at that slider down and in. Give the next guy a chance to start over fresh. 3 2. 
And Moss cranks one out to deep right field. This is trouble, and it is over Holt. Carpenter will score. And Brandon Moss, a terrific at bat to make it 2 0 St. Louis. That was a really good at bat by Brandon right there. You can see the difference between that breaking ball down and in and out over the plate. Has a little bit more time to see it react. The ball's in, you end up pulling it foul. The ball's out over the plate, you keep it fair and just stay on it a little bit longer. And right here, he hammers it. Just a good smooth swing hit the ball in the barrel and it jumps off his bat over the head of the right fielder Holt. That might have been an out in the first night as deep as Shebler was playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah I agree. It's a good point. Now it's holiday with two outs runner at second base. Ooh, That's one he'd love to have back. See how this game will develop. He, now he doesn't have that breaking ball down by the feet against these righties like he does against the left handers. It's a totally different game plan for the pitcher and for the hitter. Inside and a strike called on Holiday, and he has words with Angel Hernandez. I don't think that ball's even anywhere close. close. Wow. That kind of caught Angel by surprise. He's not the only one. See the catcher wants it down the 0 2 he gets it there and blocks it nice piece of uh, defensive work there by Barnhart. You can see Matt's upset upset with maybe the the umpire but also upset with himself because that fastball in creates doubt and wants you to speed up and then you saw he almost went on a check swing and a ball to bounce in front of the plate. So important for pitchers young and old to be able to pitch inside keep hitters off balance. Little chopper hit left side taken there by Suarez and Holiday is out. Slams his helmet in frustration. But Brandon Moss is added to the Cardinals lead. This double into right to score Carpenter with two outs. Two nothing after three. Here in the top of the fourth as we check in with Jim. Dan Jaime Garcia has taken a page from Adam Wainwright's book. Jaime says each start his goal is to do his best to throw a complete game. He knows it isn't going to happen a lot but he says it's a goal and Jaime's coming off 
one of his best starts of the season. He struck out 11 through eight innings of shutout baseball against Atlanta. He was taken out after throwing just 89 pitches. Jaime wanted to finish it. He told me after my job is to make pitches until they take me out but I wanted to stay in bad. Dan Jaime said he lobbied but Mike Matheny made his decision. Jaime said it's up to Mike. He also said maybe he needs to work on his lobbying technique. And a fly ball lifted out to shallow left and the catch made by Holiday. The thing was though and I you know I was probably one of many that wanted to see him go back out there and Jaime had the only RBI of that night but the bottom line is they won the game which is the most important aspect of that night. So it all worked out. So Mike Matheny actually did something right for once is what you're saying. That's what you said. <laughs> A lot of second guessing in this game from a lot of people in this place. Not this place, but in the league itself. No, it's pretty much everywhere. <laughs> it well, here, everywhere. here's the deal. You want to be a major league manager? Great. You can be a major league manager. By the way, you're going to be scrutinized 24 <laughs> 7. You got to deal with the media, and you're going to be second guessed. And if you can handle all that, welcome to the club. Yeah. I mean, that really, that's what it comes down to game of baseball you are going to be second guessed time and again but it's part of the game. Well, I'll tell you what to be a really good manager not only do you have to communicate have the respect of your players but I think if you communicate with the people that are asking you the questions give some kind of answer definition of what and why you did what you did I think you'll get a lot of people's respect and I think that's what Larusa did after a while he just had an answer for every question and I think Mike does a really good job with that too he's already prepared has a reason for why he makes decisions and he'll explain it the past part of the gig man it's the way it goes one and two the count here on Adam Duvall and a swing and a miss Garcia picks up a strikeout his first of the night. Career numbers for Jaime Garcia are Lowe's home field advantage. Career at home against the Central. Really good numbers against Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, Cincinnati, and Chicago. And he looks good here tonight. So two outs and nobody on. A Eugenio Suarez. I think the thing that's really changed though over the years for a manager is the amount of media that he has to deal with. It, it changed under the uh, the time that Tony started in 1996 with the Cardinals to when he finished up in 2011. Well especially now with the social media and I guess you would say media outlets with podcasts and and just people trying to reach out there with Twitter. People have an official Twitter handles that people follow. I mean, you get a lot of information off Twitter. Jim Hayes, that we were talking to Jim Hayes today about Twitter. There's a lot of people with access now to be able to ask questions. And not every, you know, they're all going to be different questions and different ideas. So, yeah, you definitely got to be able to handle the media and the people with the questions. Almost went right through the glove of Molina. <laughs> Gives you an idea of the movement. Yachty usually is catching it and it's spot on when he catches it, but he'll tell you that this is the hardest man he'll catch in this rotation because of the late movement of Garcia, the 2 2. That late movement is tough, especially because with a guy like Garcia, sometimes his ball doesn't. Do the same thing twice. He can put down fastball or sinker, and he can cut it off a little bit, and it'll go the other way. And he can handcuff a catcher that way. And hit to right, pretty well hit. Going back, Moss looks up, and it's gone. It's an opposite field home run for Suarez. Fifty-second RBI in his 18th home run, and it cuts a lead to two to one. It's a 
big time line drive right there off a guy and that's the secret to hitting against a good pitcher is really letting the ball get deep and being able to hit the ball the other way. He hit the barrel right there stayed behind the ball and. And that's just a line drive. What was that piece Two of hitting. feet over the wall. Yeah. Here's Tony Randa who is grounded out to short 0 1 pitch. Hit to third. Peralta up with it. A strike to Carpenter. Home run by Suarez. Just the second hit of the night for Brian Price's club. Gets them on the board and it's 2 1 St. Louis. Sunday, August 28, 30,000 fans ages 16 and older receive a replica batting practice hat, compliments of Monsanto. Get your tickets for the August 28th Cardinals Oakland A's game at cardinals.com slash promotions. Ballpark starting to fill up with the uh, late start, or rather the early start, normally the 7:15 start, but hour earlier tonight. We'll be in Chicago tomorrow night. A couple of afternoon games and then Sunday night baseball. Back out for a three city road trip. Chicago. Houston. And then Philly. Fly ball off the bat of Molina to right field for the first out. Looking at that schedule I see a rare. Two day off road trip. On the road. It frustrates some guys. Yeah, too. Long, being on the road longer, yeah. having the day off on the road. You like those days off, but you don't want them in random cities, and especially when it's a three game or three series road trip. I'd like to have a few at home. Here is Peralta. Did you happen to see uh, Prince Fielder's press conference today? No, I did. Really emotional. Really. Very, very emotional as he says goodbye to Major League Baseball. Has to retire due to a neck issue. A Rod, his final game, at least with the Yankees, is coming up. And Joe Girardi said, I am paid to manage, I'm not paid to manage farewell tours. <laughs> when he was talking about A Rod and playing time he may get this week. Both Prince and Cecil Fielder finish up with nearly identical numbers. Same amount of home runs, by the way. I think it's 391. Wow. Pretty good lineup for a while in Milwaukee with him right in the middle of it. Here's a 1 2 pitch to Peralta. It's one thing when you say goodbye as a player I'm assuming 
and you do it on your own terms. It's another when injury forces you out and you still have the passion to play. Well, I think it's just the ending is so bizarre. You don't know how you're going to feel, how you're going to handle it. You know, it's I, the best thing that can happen is you just play and you decide you don't. I mean, for me, don't tell anyone. You just at the end of the season, you say I've had enough and you're done. And I think it'd be really hard to have a press conference. This is crushed left field. How far? Way out of here. Johnny Peralta home run number 200 of his career. Number 200 for Johnny Peralta and a milestone home run. And a no doubter. Just a hanging slider, hanging cutter just sat right there. You can see he was even out a little out in front. Just allowed him to get the bat a little farther out in front of him and hit the barrel and that was a long one. We're gonna need to get that ball back though. They're going to find the uh, the fan that caught it. And somebody's going to have to sign a lot of bats and balls to get that <laughs> milestone for Johnny Peralta. That's a lot of home runs, 200. So somebody text whoever caught it, and tell them they're coming for you. Coming to get that ball. He's a gentleman right there. We need to work for Johnny here, don't we? And get that ball. There you Whoever's go. texting with that uh, individual there, apparently he has the home run ball. We know he'd love to give that up to Johnny Peralta for something in return. Heck yeah, I'm sure Johnny would gladly sign something. Yes, we are talking about you still. Yep. <laughs> Inside to Hazel Baker. I first started doing games and you would talk about an individual a fan in the stands and they had no idea. <laughs> That's what now things said. have changed with the cell phone. We're actually talking to them. Right. This is a little bit of a delay. You know you can bring. Uh, this is a gratuitous plug too, Jimmy. I don't know if you knew this but you can actually bring. Your phone. And download the Fox Sports Go app. And you could be here and watch the game. You could see yourself on TV. Maybe we get another shot. I'm sure the delay is long enough that somebody has brought it to his attention. Yep. Smile, you're on candid camera. Oh, <laughs> almost got the text. Yep. eBay. Quickly, or they're coming to get it. Three and two, the count. Do you have any milestone uh, baseballs at the Edmonds household? I have a bunch, actually, and you know what? I have a bunch because the fans here in this city, and I was lucky enough to hit a few were so gracious in returning the milestone hits and homers and RBIs that Barry Weinberg did some nice calligraphy on them. They're pretty special actually. I think my first hit is just sitting there and I don't even know where it is. It's just sitting somewhere with just a blank ball and a couple hundred home runs, thousand RBIs, some beautiful writing on it thanks to Barry Weinberg. And Everybody always asks who did that and why do they look so good. They practice. They know what they're doing. Now knowing us we probably are talking about the wrong guy out there and he's just actually bought that ball <laughs> but we think he actually caught it. He's taking a picture of his first beer at uh, <laughs> Bush Stadium <laughs> in the seat holder right there the cup holder. So we think it's a gentleman in the hat and the glasses out there the sunglasses so. 
Hopefully we'll get the ball for Johnny Peralta. A strike to Garcia. We are in the bottom of the fourth, 3 1 Cardinals. Solo home run by Matt Carpenter. RBI double by Brandon Moss with two outs in the third. Solo home run by Peralta. Yep, he got it. The poor guy right there just fumbled it away. See, they're asking me to give the ball back. Should I do it? Well, Have yeah. Well, what should we ask for? That's a long. Everything. <laughs> that's a long way for some of the uh, Cardinal employees to get to. Maybe not the cat. Cat probably should interview him. One ball, two strikes, with one out and a runner at first. Always a dilemma in this kind of spot to an extent depending on your lineup not necessarily the case here could be though for Brian Price or Mike Matheny if you're Matheny do you start the runner but then first base is not occupied you pitch around Ray Garcia to get to the pitcher Jaime find that that's always a interesting spot in the lineup but there's always questions every day it's either start the runner sacrifice bunt moving guys over changes the game so much by just having that pitcher in the on deck circle or even in the hole. Here's a one two pitch instead Hazel Baker is picked off. Well there's our answer he was running. Ooh. He almost didn't tag him. Nearly got the hand in there. Yeah. May have. All for not now as the next pitch is on its way. The one two to Garcia is taken low and in the dirt. Outfield is straight away. Two bowls, two strikes. Cardinals about hit the Reds 5-3. The 2 2. Uh oh. <laughs> nice to meet you. Now give me the baseball. <laughs> we got some seats. We got a hot dog. That is Rip Foul. See now if you're that guy you say oh I'd be happy to give it back. Season tickets a lot of publicity tonight. I'd like to be in the green seats. Uh, every player needs to sign a jersey and here you go. <laughs> uh Oh Secret Service is getting involved now. Let's get Peralta. Get the sign baseball right now. Garcia with a fly ball out to Billy Hamilton. Home run number 200 for Johnny Peralta. That young man has become a star because he gets this souvenir. A little history here at the ballpark. Congratulations to Johnny Peralta.
And the fan that caught home run number 200 off the bat of Johnny Peralta on the right. And he still has not given up the baseball. We're assuming that he will. However, where I'm getting a little concerned, Jimmy, is that we were talking about asking for season tickets, green seats, <laughs> and an autograph from every player. And that may be getting relayed to him, and he's thinking, hey, sir, I want green seats <laughs> season. <laughs> no. Give up the ball. Johnny will take care of you. You know what's going through my head? His, he's going to come home because of this great nation of fans, and his parents are going to be like, what took you so long? What were you doing? And he's going to go home and get in trouble. Don't you have any respect for those players? I mean, this is drama right here. I mean, you we can't fly you on the team charter to Chicago. I mean, it is the dog days of summer, but that is high drama. As Juan makes the play. You better hurry up before Freddie Stiff gets there. Well, the guy might be trying to negotiate his college education, so <laughs> let's give him some credit. One out and nobody on. And a strike to Tucker Barnard. 3 1 Cardinals here in the top of the fifth. Barnhart grounded out to short. Wonder if we need to get the uh, the cat to intervene out there. Because normally he's the kind of guy that could get in the middle of that. Making sure that calmer heads prevail in this type of situation. Don't lose the glove. Definitely don't lose the ball. We're going to get to the bottom of this with Jimmy. That's I'm, going to be I'm going to go out on a limb. TV. They were waiting for the Johnny Peralta signature on the baseball. So here is the pitcher, Di Slafani. And the first pitch is popped up, giving Chase Carpenter and no play. His uh, phone's, uh, <laughs> cell phone bill is skyrocketing as we speak. Here comes the text from the parents. This guy's been on TV more than you and I have been in a month. And fans are thankful. So two outs and the 0 1 pitch to Di Slafani. I bet he's a very nice, gracious Cardinal fan and is happy to give up that baseball. And hopefully, soon enough, we're going to find out. And there's nobody I'd want on the case more than Jim Haynes. And a strikeout for Garcia. And that's his third. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Quit paying attention to your phone. You're supposed to pay attention to the game. Come on.
Smith, Edward Jones will present 30,000 fans 16 and older with a collectible plaque honoring Chris Carpenter, Joe Torre, Terry Moore, and Sam Brady. They will be inducted into the Cardinals Hall of Fame earlier in the day. And get your tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. Tell you what, eye-opening experience for me that this is all going on while I was playing baseball games for well, all those I was gonna years. Ask you, <laughs> what do you think, honestly, and we've been joking around about this, but what, what honestly do you think Peralta would offer or the club would offer in a situation like this? I, I don't know. I'm sure a ball and a bat, but I, I, I've been around where someone has asked for too much, and they said, you know what, keep the ball. Yep. Have a good night. Thanks yep. for coming. We'll see you next time. Just hope that doesn't happen with this young man. He's been on TV. So. <laughs> <laughs> One and two, the count. It'll be Garcia, Carpenter, and Wong. Maybe Martin can get him on his guest of the week on Sunday night. Have a nice little interview with the young man. There's a base hit by Garcia. You talking about Martin Kilcoin? Yeah. <laughs> he is the uh, sports director at Fox Channel 2. Well, we were talking about uh, Prince Fielder earlier, part of our Team Mobile Raider coverage of baseball. Ichiro Suzuki passes the great Roberto Clemente, 29th all time on the hits list. Verlander goes tonight. And Prince Fielder retires from baseball, two spinal fusions. I think I misspoke earlier and said 391 home runs. It was 319 for Prince and Cecil Fielder. Speaking of home runs, here is Carpenter. He popped one. He has a home run tonight to go along with a triple off the wall in left field. Two and oh the count. Runner at first is Jaime Garcia. And we do understand that uh, Jim Hayes has found the young man that has the souvenir. And while we have a moment, let's uh, head out to Jim Hayes. Jimmy, this is right up your alley. Yeah, this is uh, Tucker Stevens of Avon, Illinois. This is the ball. Show him. Johnny Peralta's 200th career home run. This has value. He's the eighth shortstop uh, in baseball history to, to get to 200 with uh, players with 75% of their games played at shortstop. This has value. There seems to be some dispute as to what you're going to get back in return. Has the deal been reached? Yes, I am going to give the ball back. After the game, I will get a signed ball from Johnny. And if everything works out, I should be able to get to meet him. And it seemed like there was a little back and forth. Was that their original offer, or did you have to do a little wheeling and dealing to get him to, you know, up the ante? It, it really wasn't that. It was just a lot of, can it be done? They're heading to Chicago tonight. So they, they said, if, if it works out, we'll get you to meet them. If not, we'll just give you a sign ball. I said, that's fine. And, and part of the thing, too, is you're a Cardinal fan, and you want Johnny to have this keepsake, right? Yeah, I do. I really do. I mean, this I'm sure this means a lot to him, and I don't, I don't want to ruin that. Has your cell phone been blowing up? Because we were hoping you had one of those unlimited plans with your cell phone provider, because you probably got a lot of activity on there. I, I hope I do, because, it, it yeah, it has been blowing up. But uh, a deal has been struck. Hopefully you'll meet Johnny who get a signed ball and Johnny gets uh, his piece of history. You're happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Nice meeting you and and Dan this is journalism. We have just done journalism. Some of your best work too, Jimmy nice work. Ah, I like to hear that because Johnny deserves the baseball and I think the fan it's a, a great chance for them to meet Johnny and yeah we have to get out of here we go to Chicago but I'm sure there's going to be a few minutes that those two could hook up and have a handshake and a picture and an autograph. I don't see why not. Yep. And the bus can wait.
I love the fact that the fan came out and said, look, <laughs> there's the picture right there. Hey, this belongs to Johnny. I'm going to give it to Johnny. And that is the best part maybe of the night beating the cat. And that little blue phone he has right there, that picture will go straight onto Twitter. Yes, it will. Good job, Jimmy. Runners at first and second, and here's the 0 1. Wong has had a tough night so far. He struck out twice, couldn't get the bunt down there. His second strikeout came up with a runner at third and one out. That's the way it should be done, huh? That Give is, that ball back to him. That is good work all the way around. Yep. The camera, the cat, the young man. That is journalism, as he says. He loves journalism. Here's the 0 2 pitch. That's tapped foul. And somebody tweeted me that they would have the ball. The man's uh, wanted to be the tarp crew for one game. Jim Hayes signed senior pick, senior year pick, and a dugout pick with Eugene Koo and lifetime nachos. Big demands. Ground ball, Votto to second. And the Cardinals will have runners at the corners and only one out. It's an interesting demand. Not sure which one is the craziest. That young man is on TV all night. Say Avon, Illinois? I believe so. Well, if you follow Jim Hayes on Twitter, undoubtedly, if it hasn't happened already, you're going to see a very nice picture of that home run ball and the uh, individual. You can follow Jim at the cat on Fox. The cat on Fox. 34,000 followers. That's I think right. I saw for him today. It took him a while to figure out how to see that, but <laughs> we found it. Well, Jimmy always providing journalism with everything that he does. You know Jim wanted to go out there and be a part of the action and make sure that he got to the bottom of it and he has. Going to the count here on Brandon Moss who came through with two outs and a double into right back in the third. And a check on Colton Wong. And if you really think about it if it wasn't for the cat. How many people out there right now would be wondering. What is going on. Well They're count me in I would be. I would see how many people are watching us maybe five six see what the Cardinals have done is that they put security by that young man. O2 and a pickoff and he's back in safely so they keep an eye on him keep an eye on the baseball and then once the game is through maybe even if Johnny gets double switched out of the game something like that pinch hit for him. there he is they will take him to uh, the clubhouse. To meet Johnny Peralta. And if you're wondering, are they getting the right ball? If he was trying to swap it out, if he had another baseball, it's authenticated. So that could not happen. Without the cat, there would be a million people at home on the edge of their seat waiting to find out what was going on. Two balls, two strikes. Let's see if Moss can't come through here in the bottom of five. And a swing and a miss. So he did exchange the baseball. <laughs> the two guys behind the uh, gentleman that caught the ball seem to be riveted in this conversation. Whatever happened to uh, meet me at Aggie's office uh, after the game, and we'll uh, we'll take care of everything. 
It's where he used to be. All right, big strikeout. Di Slafani, and now Holiday with two outs. He is one for two. Handshake, the exchange. <laughs> You're killing me. That's how we cover all the angles of the game here on Fox Sports Midwest. Six is a serious number and on the run when the Cardinals score six any size drink just 50 cents the next day coffee fountain frozen drinks when they score you pour at your nearest on the run you earned it. What are you shaking your head at me for maybe two thumbs up. I like it because you earned it. <laughs> I like that one don't you. Jimmy's feeling his oats up here. I, see, I think huh? that you were just. Talking about that because you were anticipating a three run homer. I like that too. Foul ball. There's a rumor going around already that they should have sent a more tougher negotiating team. Really? Parents will be proud. He dragged it out a little bit and gave up the goods. Speaking of parents, I want to give a shout out and say hi to my mom. She's sitting at home, been feeling a little under the weather. Good. All the way in Southern California sure watching hello. the game tonight. Hi, Mom. In the dirt, kept in front. Nice play by Barnhart. So, two balls, two strikes with two outs and two on. He's had a couple of those here tonight. Done a nice job to keep that in front. Hit up the middle. Oh, what a stop here. Throw to first and out at first. Tony Rendo with the play of the night. Takes a hit away and an RBI. Very close at first base. Did they get him? They sure Ooh. did. What a play, Tony Rendo. Keeps it 3-1. Baseball is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day.
and by your local Volkswagen dealer. Three one in the top of the six. Looked as if Holiday thought maybe he had a base hit coming out of the batter's box, and then Tony Renda makes a terrific backhanded play and robs Holiday to keep this at a 3 1 at St. Louis lead. Boy, what a play that was. That was uh, not what Matt Holiday was hoping for right there, and not what I was hoping for. Reds with three hits tonight. Garcia has struck out three. And the first pitch to Billy Hamilton is taken for a ball. Hamilton tonight is 0 for 2. Twice he has grounded out to Johnny Peralta. Third baseman is in, and so is Adams, or rather Carpenter at first base. Matt Adams originally in the starting lineup, for those of you that have joined us late. And then was taken out with a sore shoulder before our first pitch. They shade Hamilton a bit to right center and a ground ball. Garcia has to be quick, and he is. Tell you what, Greg Garcia has shown this year, and we've talked about it a lot, but he's shown this year he can play defense consistently at this level at short, third, and second. Especially though it's short. And that's a really nice play right there, knowing that Billy's running. Gets rid of the ball in a hurry. He's got a good strong arm. Accurate. Cozard 0 for 2. Fly to left. Lined out to left. Cardinals trying to find that right combination because this young man is out. You never thought you would miss a lead Miss Diaz at the beginning of the season this much. And this offense. Defense lineup, they miss him. He's had a breakout campaign. What a tremendous find for the St. Louis Cardinals. Brand new daddy as well, so congratulations to he and his wife. And the 1 1 pitch. Ground ball, Peralta. Low throw, and the pick by Carpenter. Two outs and it brings in Votto, who is one for two. Some of the young pitchers the Cardinals have Alex Reyes, the flamethrower, saw him last night. He is 19 days away from his 22nd birthday. Weaver making his debut Saturday at Wrigley Field. Martinez, Waka, Rosenthal. That's your BJC healthcare difference maker. Two outs, nobody on, and here is Votto. How about Luke Weaver? You know you're getting the start on Saturday, and oh, by the way, it's coming at Wrigley Field. Cards Cubs rivalry, which the Cubs are one of, if not the best team currently in baseball. Got a lot on your mind right now, I would imagine. I asked John Mozalock about that. I said, a little concerned at all about giving a major league debut at Wrigley. And he said, yeah, we've thought about it for sure. We understand it's a tough assignment, but we think he's ready for it. And Garcia, another 1 2 3 inning with three ground ball outs. He looks sharp here tonight. We're midway through six, 3 1 Cardinals.
takes us to Josh Smith. 13 of his last 16 appearances, he's thrown more than one inning. And in eight of his last 14, at least two innings. So kind of the pseudo long man or middle reliever that they have in their pen, and that's why they go with him here as we play in the sixth. Yadier Molina, Johnny Peralta, Jeremy Hazelbaker. Here's Yadier Molina. Had a gentleman uh, tweet a photo at me of uh, Game 7, 2011, Skip Schumacher and his son on the field. And he got that sign. And his son, very young at the time, waving to the crowd along with Skip and the confetti on the field. What a great photo that is. <laughs> that Isn't is that great? Pretty, yeah, that is pretty awesome. You're getting all the scoops tonight. Oh, yeah. Here's an 0-2 pitch to Yadier Molina. Cardinals have out hit the red 6-3 in this game, and that's popped foul and out of play. Lester and Martinez tomorrow. John Lester, 12 and 4, ERA under three. Martinez coming off a start in which he gave up a pair of three run homers. He's 10 and 7 and a 3.29 ERA. Let's negotiate for that baseball, too, I guess. Here's a 1 2. On the air tomorrow from Wrigley Field in Chicago will come your way at 630 705 with the first pitch Martinez and Lester. Jake Arrieta will go on Friday afternoon Adam Wainwright Weaver's debut Saturday. So good matchups but always fun at Wrigley. Almost caught Yachty. Weaver will go against Kyle Hendricks, who's an 11 game winner. Leak and Lackey on Sunday night. Looking forward for me for seeing a different view of Wrigley Field. Was it tough to play center there? It was. It was really tough. It was especially tough as a visitor. Got a little easier as a Chicago Cub, get a little more comfortable, but. Tough place to play at times, especially with the wind. Fields a little uneven, or used to be a little uneven. I gotta ask you, was it as big a deal when you came back to St. Louis as a Chicago Cub as it was for all of us in the media and the fans? Because there was a ton of hype around you coming back to St. Louis as a Cub. And that will go off the sidewall. Molina, the wide turn around first, it stays right there. You remember how much hype that was? Yeah, I remember. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, it wasn't that big of a deal for me. I didn't think coming back, I knew it was going to happen eventually. But uh, yeah, it was a little unfortunate that there was some awkward moments and times. But I mean, it's part of the job. I don't think people realize that you. You move on and sometimes you just have to play with whoever takes you and happen to be the Cubs but had a good time while I was there and got to see the other side of the rivalry and got to appreciate Chicago a little bit more than I did. I had a blast. So Johnny Peralta home run number 200. That gentleman right there with the glasses on top of the cap. Yeah, he better get ready again. You never know. 201 may be coming right there. This guy might be listening to us. That was right on cue, putting on the glove and <laughs> actually made us look good. That's shocking. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Peralta. I think 
it was Tony at the time said well no I don't think that Jim Edmond should get a standing ovation when he comes back as a cub to be treated like all the other cubs <laughs> a little different it's Jim Edmonds coming back the 2 0 pitch 2 and 1 Johnny was trying to hit that young man another souvenir right there ball got up and got up and in in a hurry Chevy Fox tracks that was his first home run since the 16th in Miami two balls and one strike on Johnny Peralta short lead at first by Yadier Molina. Take you back to the fourth inning. A high towering home run off the bat of Johnny Peralta. Number six this year, RBI number 17. Didn't make the catch, but that ball rolled down to that young man, and he's exchanged at baseball. 3 1. Now 3 and 2. Another souvenir. Three two. And held on to. Strike out of Peralta as he chased a ball. Cardinals have struck out six times tonight. It's a good slider from Josh Smith. Threw him a couple fastballs in, up and in. 93 miles an hour and then makes a really good slider down and away. It's really tough to lay off that pitch when you're anticipating a good hard fastball. Yep. One pitch misses up and in one ball one strike guys at this level have such a great understanding for the most part of the strike zone you'll see him expand but when they take a strike and it's borderline I mean many times you could see it going either way but when it happens against them they expand their zone as Hazelbanker flies to center field the whole mental part about that is you take a pitch that you think is a ball and he calls it a strike and you're thinking to yourself if he throws that pitch again I can't hit it it's hard to swing at it because I think it's a ball and so you do you expand your zone you start to chase you start to think a little bit and you actually start to predetermine what you're going to swing at and that's when you get yourself into big trouble and that's really the exact opposite of what hitting is all about. Inside to Garcia. I think the one thing in baseball is the hitters give the pitcher too much credit, and the pitcher gives the hitters too much credit. Runner at first is Yadier Molina. And the 1 0 pitch to Greg. Chop right side. Votto from his knees, and he'll get the lead man. We head to the seventh with the Cardinals on top by the score of three to one.
St. Louis Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Bud Light. Please drink responsibly. And by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Beatles night coming up here at the ballpark. Paperback writer entertaining the fans. Of course, you knew that, Jimmy. I was a little stumped. Really? With the song. Twelve ground ball outs from ya uh, from Jaime Garcia here tonight. Here's Adam Duvall. He has not walked a man. He has struck out three and allowed a total of three hits. So the pitch count only at 61 for Jaime here tonight. He's done a really good job of keeping the ball down and around the plate. Throwing strikes with that movement. A lot of ground balls. Pitch count down. Give you a chance to do what he was talking about, which is going all the way through the game. They say even playing catch with Garcia is tough. I can imagine. Would not want to be his catch partner during the course of the season. 3 0. Oh. Do you ever have a guy when you're playing catch, he threw that heavy ball, or maybe the ball was just moving everywhere? Mike James. Oh, yeah. He used to play catch all offseason, and it wasn't fun. Here's a 3 0. Oh. And a leadoff walk. That's a name from the past. What's he doing now? Living in Florida, he is a firefighter. I think in the summer sometimes he is a rescue lifeguard. I think he got the first win of our first playoff game here at home in 2000 when we all got here together. You're talking about Garcia and his pitch count. I think that the hardest thing for people to grasp with this pitch count and being able to get through nine innings is as a pitcher to keep your pitch count down you have to allow them to hit the ball and your stuff has to be good enough to the ball to be hit to the defense I mean you just can't throw the ball right down the middle so think about that when as a pitcher growing up if you had any kind of an arm you were always trying to strike everyone out but you can't do that in the big leagues and stay in the game for nine innings into the corner and right and the catch made by Moss. Not an easy play. Not a, not at all, especially going into that corner. The hard That's thing, not number one. The hard thing for me was running into the corner or running into the wall where the wall was taller than you were or you couldn't go over it because then you have to determine whether, when to back off because you know the ball can bounce and bounce around in the outfield. It's nice when you're going back to the wall knowing that it's either a home run or, or you're going to catch it. To Tony Renda has come up with the top defensive play of the night, robbing Matt Holiday. Runner at first is Duvall. One out. Garcia would love the double play instead of check on Duvall. Bold and refreshing frozen strawberry lemonade. It's back and it's only. Available at McDonald's. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Garcia to Renda. Taken high. Some of these pitches starting to get up yeah, a little bit. I was going to say, I would hate to say that he's tired, but you can tell that his mechanics have changed a little bit. It's like he's falling off the mound a little bit more than he was, and the ball's kind of riding on him. Sometimes, right in the middle of the game, you could just get into a funk. You don't have to be tired. Here's a 2 0. 
fouled back in a good cut. See the wrapping around the right hand of Renda. Watch his swing. Not the ideal follow through, is it? I don't understand. Scott Rowland used to do that every now and then. Never could figure out how you could have that top hand stronger than the bottom hand. Hit into right. Moss is over. And he makes the catch. I always felt in watching Roland, we saw it more after the shoulder issues that he had. You know, sometimes maybe you're out in front, you're fooled, and yeah, you can't stress reach on out the there. shoulder. For sure. I didn't have much of a top hand, so I didn't have that problem. It was more of a bottom hand swinger, but I did tear up my right shoulder in Anaheim, and it really made it tough for a couple years to swing and miss, and it hurt for a long time. Two outs runner at first. Tyler Holt. Cardinals about hit the red 7 3. 3 1 our score. And the first pitch is a strike. It'll be decision time coming up for Mike Matheny. Will it be a decision even at all? 71 pitches. Jaime Garcia is due up first, looking ahead to the bottom of the seventh. You would think with the starters not going deep Garcia pitching well he stays in this game. You would think so. I would like to see him. Get through this inning without that walk but. Keep the pitch count as low as you can for as long as you can. Perfect world. Good spot right here to get out of this inning. And so efficient here tonight. Most he's thrown in an inning, 14 pitches back in the fourth. 0 oh 2 the count on Tyler Holt. And a swing and a miss. Blocked by Molina. Strikeout for Jaime Garcia. That's for tonight. Time to stretch with the Redbirds leading this one by the score of 3 to 1. Honda home run inning. Cardinals hit a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers donate a thousand dollars to the Make a Wish Foundation of Missouri. There is the uh, Twitter account of Jim Hayes. Make sure you follow him. Get those numbers up. And there he is, an exclusive. This is Tucker. 
posing with Johnny's 200th home run ball. Hashtag journalism. Hashtag STO cards. Go cat. Jimmy is always conducting journalism. Nice work by Mr. Hayes to visit with that young man. Now that poor young man's going to have more followers and people blowing up his phone than he knows what to do with. So Jaime hitting for himself. No surprise. Two balls, no strikes. Second inning of work for Smith. Three and oh. There's a strike three and one. Josh Smith has a unique delivery I think. I've been watching him for an inning now and. It's always interesting to see a guy throw hard not really finished towards the towards the plate. He almost comes back. Towards center field after he releases the ball. You see those young fans Jimmy. Yes I do. Well you probably need to go buy a souvenir for. Sutton. Your lovely daughter and a statistician. Yesterday. Yep. If you need I, to I'll, I'll give you the break you go get, go ahead and get one get a half an inning off I need to buy one for my son Landon who started school today. I cannot believe school is back. School is back. Three two pitch and it's a lead off walk for Garcia. Follow Cardinals baseball with the MLB.com at bat app. Stay up to the moment as they do with game day live and all the video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone or tablet. Had a great conversation the other day with Adam Wainwright. So we're talking about big league impact and what he's done in the community. That's a foul ball, but we also talked a lot of baseball. And I said, when did you know that you were going to be here and, and stick? And he said he came up in 2005 and was not a part of the traveling party in the uh, in the playoffs of that year. And he said he was at home watching Albert Pujols hit that dramatic home run against Houston. He said I was going nuts just like any fan but I was so disappointed I wasn't with the team. He said that's when I knew. I'm doing everything I can to be a part of the team. And the next year he closes out the World Series. Very interesting. Introspective look at his career and how. He couldn't figure out in Atlanta. Where he was a first round pick and other guys below him were starting to move up the depth chart. He said well what's going on here and he said I needed to change my life. I needed to change the way I worked. He said I thought I was the next John Smoltz and I was far from it. <laughs> and the best thing that happened to me was being traded to St. Louis. It was a wake up call. It's interesting you say that I was going to say a lot of guys that I know have learned a lot from being sent home and watching games on TV or injured and sitting back and having to watch because. You really think about it if you've ever been in that situation and I'm sure for you it's no different than being in the booth. Days go by really fast and if you don't get a chance to slow down and look at it from a different angle. A month goes by two months go by and you don't even really really remember what happened and that happens on the field even faster. Next thing you know you as a hitter you've given away 100 at bats and you can't figure out why you're hitting 220 and. Sometimes when you back off a little bit or you get sent home or sent down. You think and you and you your ears all of a sudden open up It was one of the conversations I had with Mike Matheny the other day was about when. Players finally get it like when is that time when a young player gets it and the conversation really wasn't about anyone in general is just about like. When you hear other players come to him and say oh you know what I worked on it was this and I finally figured out this and he said to me. 
the majority of the players have already been told that months and years in advance. They just didn't hear it at that didn't time. Click. Yeah. So it's very interesting to hear Adam saying the same thing. Like he made a big difference and a big impact on him while he sat at home watching where he thought he should be. He also credited Chris Carpenter for a lot in his career. He said he played a round of golf and he was in the card with Chris Carpenter. And Jason Isringhausen was in another cart with another teammate. And Izzy finally said, after like 15 or 16 holes, are you guys going to play with us? Are you going to even talk to us? He said, because those two were so locked in. And he said, it's a conversation and a round of golf that he would never, ever forget with Chris Carpenter. And it all was on baseball. Nothing else, just all baseball. As Carpenter pulls it foul. Well, and that's a lot of the learning comes away from the field. The same way, like I told you, McGuire was so instrumental on things for me just by telling me how he visualized his at bats. And it wasn't anything about looking for certain pitches, it was about how he wanted his body to be in a certain position and direct his body into right center field so he wouldn't try to pull off or he wouldn't try to do too much down the right field line. He wasn't trying to hit Big Mac land, he was trying to drive the ball to the middle of the field and actually into right center field. And so you know when those guys sit down and talk and they talk about mentally visualizing being able to throw a certain pitch in a certain count in a certain you know situation it goes a long way because there's no field to interrupt and the catch is made that's Cozart the shortstop who makes the play and with that Carpenter is retired and it brings in Colton Wong. Don't miss St. Louis's biggest office party and the workplace wellness event of the year. The Biz Dash, Thursday, September 15th, Ballpark Village. Live music, company tailgates, and more. Fox Sports Midwest presents the friendly industry team competition. Create your company team, join the fun, visit stlbizdash.com. One outrunner at first. Interesting look at Joey Votto and how you play and how you hold on the pitcher at first base. Sometimes you'll see guys, and in, instead of playing in front of the pitcher, they'll play behind. Could the runner be a distraction with a left handed hitter on a ground ball? Definitely. I think a lot of people don't like the runner crossing in front of their face, or maybe he wants to stay close enough just in case. They want to throw over but the pitcher's running so he's not going to be on the bag. Foul back by Wong. I don't know. I, I, I really truly believe that it's just one of those things where when you're behind the runner you do have that. It's for, for the pitcher especially he's not getting a big lead. So in where Joe, uh, Joey's playing you know you don't want to be right there and the pitcher not getting his lead. So if he's lazy you have to move. It's different with the speedy runner that runs the base as well. Base hit for Wong into right. Garcia back to the back at second. Cardinal fans high at Regency St. Louis at the Arch offering an incredible Cardinals package this year that includes overnight accommodations tickets to a home game personalized Louisville slugger bat and a twenty five dollar food and beverage credit to brew house or red kitchen and bar book today at six five five one two three four visit st. Louis arch .com. I guess to further your point Jimmy is that more than likely he's not throwing over two, which would be why with a position player you'd be in front keep him close if he throws over but pitcher wouldn't think that would be the case normally you would do that when you're worried about the guy bunting but we'll see It'll be interesting to know what the reason was our Chevy call to the pin it's Jumbo Diaz the hard throwing right hander
guy's 26th appearance and Jimmy you were just looking at uh, his career numbers here's a guy that has bounced all over the place in his major league career and he's trying to make it stick here in year two with the Cincinnati Reds and what's amazing is when you see the velocity on his fastball you wonder how that's possible throws it a lot about 65 percent of the time a slider a split finger but he's a guy that throws in the mid to high 90s consistently. Runners at first and second. And the first pitch taken high by Moss. He's had a couple of really good at bats in this series. You think about his bases loaded walk in game one to tie the game. And then earlier. In this ball game, third inning, two outs, count of three and two, fouled away some tough pitches, and then eventually drove a double, picked up an RBI, and he pops it up. Playable, catch is made, two down. See that good fastball right there, challenging Brandon Moss, and the fastball just middle in, 96 miles an hour. Tough to get to. Popped it up. It's an easy out for the catcher to jog on back there and retire Brandon. Holiday was robbed back in the fifth inning. Runners at first and third. And it was a backhanded play by Tony Renda on a ball hit up the middle. And he barely got Holiday at first, and that ended the threat. And the first pitch is taken low. Tell you what, the key to me in this inning right now is how long that Jaime Garcia has been on the base. You can see he was out there bending over, he's wiping off his forehead. It's, the hot, same thing. it's hot out there. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Holiday. Chops it left side. And Suarez takes his time and throws a strike to first. Cardinal Strand, two. They have left seven on tonight. Good work by Diaz as we head to inning number eight. Cincinnati 8-3, and they lead this game 3-1. Thank you, Scott, for the update. Jaime Garcia pitching into the eighth. He went eight innings on Friday night against the Atlanta Braves, and that game and this game, he has been very, very sharp. Twelve ground ball outs for Garcia. Only three hits allowed, and he struck out four. A look from uh, section 151 here at the ballpark behind home plate.
Cardinals, if they can win tonight, they would be tied with Miami in the wild card. It's funny how you feel about your team 24 hours later. You know, last night, tough night. Did see the debut of Alex Reyes, but looking at it from the team perspective, very disappointing. And yet tonight, you get good starting pitching thus far, and that is a fair ball. And who knows what may happen tonight? It's touched by a fan. That'll be a ground rule double. This game can change in a hurry. And I told you last night we were talking on the side, and just that young man coming in at the game, in into the game, even though it was a loss, kind of put a charge in the group, charge in the fans. Something even as silly as that can turn the team around, and give them a little energy, just a little shot in the arm. Please don't touch the baseball while it's in play. At this point, you have to wonder because he's been a starter, how often can you go to Alex Reyes? Is he conditioned for back to back nights? Certainly not right now, you wouldn't think. But when can you start throwing him back to back nights if you wanted to do that? Round ball, Peralta looks back the runner, one away. He was the story from the Cardinals perspective last night Alex Reyes at one point hits 101 miles an hour received a very nice ovation as he came in and it wasn't only the fastball but a knee buckling breaking ball at times too. first out he recorded was a strikeout that a pair of ground outs in as good as advertised at least for one night he definitely was and. Like I said, a shot in the arm for the team, a little energy, a little excitement, even in a loss. A lot of people have been talking about him, and he's here and said it. Every bit as good as advertised. It's sharply. Peralta up. Hamilton running down the line, and he takes a hit away. A little bit of everything from Johnny Peralta tonight. I'll tell you what, I was watching him the other day play shortstop, and it's funny, he gets hurt. Gets moved over. And he just really hasn't lost a beat defensively. I mean, he was making some great plays the other day at short, put him back over at third, and just as solid as it gets. He's a big guy, and he makes it look really easy on defense. Pitches by inning for Garcia. Dave Duncan always used to say if you can be at that 15 mark each inning, usually, not always, but usually you're having success. Here's a 1 0 pitch with a runner at second base. Ground ball deep in the hole, Garcia. And out! Oh, what a play! Garcia and Carpenter. Looked like Garcia may have even had an issue trying to get that out of the glove, regardless, just to make that close. What a play. No argument, no challenge from the Reds, so he must be out. Greg Garcia to get Cozart. Outstanding. 3 1.
A new episode of Cardinals Legends. We take you back to 1996. Cardinals gain new ownership led by the DeWitt Group. New manager Tony La Russa returned to the playoffs. Cardinals Legends, a new era begins. Brought to you by your Mid America Chevy dealers. Friday at 6:30 on Fox Sports Midwest. Cardinals went into postseason play. They clinched in Pittsburgh. They beat the Padres first round. They were up three games to one on the Atlanta Braves. And it all fell apart. Yankees wound up winning the World Series. Here is Yadier Molina. Nobody throwing in the Cardinals pen. This is our Chevy call to the pen for the Cincinnati Reds. He's a good one, as we saw the other night. That's Blake Wood. I believe he threw two innings the other night and he was impressive. Here's a 1 0. Watch when he takes the baseball, he'll use that splitter grip. So initially, that's how he grabs the baseball and then has to rearrange it if possible. If you're going to throw the ball right down the middle, you better have some good stuff. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Yadier Molina. As we saw the other night, he was getting it up to 98, 99 miles per hour. I believe he's got a really good curveball to go with that. Just when you get a little timing down, snap that off. And give you something else to look at. Two balls and two strikes. The Cubs with a 2 0 lead. Bottom of five at Wrigley Field. Padres lead Pittsburgh 4 0. That's in the top of the eighth. Mentioned the Dodgers lost, and so did Miami earlier today. 2 2. Three two ground ball hit left side Suarez to his left one out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. So in a few moments uh, Johnny Peralta may be meeting with that fan out in left field. As he picked up home run number 200. A lot of fans didn't realize that here at the ballpark and in between innings they put up a highlight. He's gone. His glove though is still there. Waiting for the other homer. Here's a 1 0. It's a nasty pitch. Plaza tire service replay. Nice cutter, slider, more of a slider right there. Look at the location of both of those pitches. Went with the same pitch. One and two. Peralta's home run back in the fourth. He is grounded out to short and struck out. The Reds, by the way, will have Votto, Duvall, and Suarez coming up. Three, four, and five looking ahead to the top of the ninth. And the one-two pitch. Struck him out. This guy's got good stuff. He's got great stuff. I, I, I was impressed the other night. I'm impressed right now. Looks like this was a split. Really good split. Ball just came diving out of his hands. Johnny Peralta is swinging right over the top of it. I mean, it's when you see guys swing like that, you know the stuff that they're throwing up there is as good as it is. Us watching it, it's got to even be even better when you're standing at the plate. Hazelbanker hits it into the left field corner.
And a double for Jeremy Hazelbaker. So how you handle that 97 mile an hour fastball you just stay inside of it hope nobody's there to catch it. Here is Greg Garcia had to go to break after that final out what a play by Garcia in the hole it's short. Play wasn't even close as he got Cozart could run a bit. Two outs and Greg taps it foul. I think you said it best earlier when he has done everything you've asked of him. Defense has improved, finds his way to get on base, plays in, in the clutch as good as anyone. If he gives you a really good at bat, and he's doing a lot for this team. Still don't know if Garcia is staying in this game now. Always up and throwing. He may be just getting loose for insurance. Adams would be the pinch hitter for Jaime Garcia at the on deck circle. Jaime only at 78 pitches on the night. Do you want Votto to face a lefty to start the inning? Mike is trying to bait them into maybe putting another guy on base. And a swing and a miss and a strikeout of Garcia. So we'll see if Jaime stays in this game or if they go to Sungwano. Our Budweiser player of the game Jaime Garcia eight innings tonight only four hits last two starts 16 combined only one run allowed. Steven Piscotti takes over in right field Brandon Moss shifting to left. Jaime Garcia trying to pick up his fifth complete game of his career. He had one earlier this year. That was a shutout of Milwaukee and a one hitter. First pitch. That'll test Moss. He won't get there. Fights it off, and it's a ground rule double. So it brings the tying run to the plate. 
And a leadoff double for Joey Votto. Be careful here. Adam Duvall digs in with a ground out, a strikeout, and a walk. That was the only walk issued by Jaime tonight. And that's going to get O throwing in a hurry. Oh, yeah. Hit out of play. Duvall currently fifth in home runs with 26. Bruce and Story with 27. Chris Bryant 28. Nolan Arenado with 30 of the Rockies. Runner at second, Joey Votto. And the 0-1 pitch on its way. One ball, one strike. Sometimes you get in a ninth inning with a starter, you think he's running on fumes. I wouldn't think that's the case right now with Garcia at only 81 pitches. No, I wouldn't think that. That's hammered, but foul. But you can see even with Garcia, when the ball's down and moving, and when the ball's up, it flattens out. The guys are hammering it. This ball gets up in the zone and nothing going at all. Two pitches before, both of them cut. One of them cut, one of them ran. And keep the ball down in the zone for the entire game. In the dirt. Garcia now at 83 pitches. He does not get Duvall. Macy, Mike Matheny head to his bullpen for Sung Wan O. Oh, we will see. The 2 2 pitch to Adam Duvall. Ball now is up in the zone. Like you said, definitely not out of gas, I would imagine, but maybe trying a little bit harder to finish this one off. Outfield is straight away. They are very deep. And the 2 2 pitch. Stad Garcia steps off the pitching rubber. We are in Chicago tomorrow night. First of four against the Cubs will come your way at 630. Cardinals trying to make this a 500 home stand three and three. Two two. Ripped into left field and a base hit. Votto had to hold to make sure it got through. And runners at the corners. Nobody out. We'll see if Mike Matheny goes to Sung Wan O. See Garcia very upset standing on the mound. So Chevy call to the pin. Nice work by Jaime.
Cincinnati 9-6. But still some unfinished business here. They're making it interesting. We're the top of the ninth. Runners at the corners, nobody out in a 3-1 game in favor of St. Louis. Sukwano, the closer of the Cardinals, 9 for 11 in save opportunities. A lot of game left, as you told me in the break. For some reason, these last three outs are always the toughest ones to get. Runners at first and third. Obviously, there's some fans very excited. The first pitch by O. And a ground ball, double play ball. Out at second. Out at first. One pitch, two away. Run scores to make it three to two. Another good play by Johnny Peralta. I like that ground ball double play right oh, out of the yeah. shoot. You can see now that they always been around the league a few times. Guys are ready for that fastball. Tony Renda. Here's a 1 0. One ball, one strike. And the Reds down to their final strike. Their feet in the one two pitch. Struck him out! And the Cardinals take two of three. Garcia, tremendous tonight. Oh, picks up the save. The Cardinals hold on by the final of three to two. Nice home run by Carpenter and Peralta. Big home run by Peralta. What a great job by Jaime Garcia tonight. Efficient, quick. Did about everything he can do except for get the final three outs. And O went in there and did the job quickly. Picks up the win. He's now nine and eight. The Cardinals pick up win number 60 on the year. 40,019 saw it. O comes in, gets the final three outs, a double play, then the strikeout. That ensures win number nine for Jaime Garcia. It's off to.